To keep up with China and Russia, the Pentagon is developing and deploying hypersonic capabilities. And for this, they asked the one and only Mr. Elon Musk. Everyone knows how great of an engineer Musk is. He's one of a kind in his field. As for his companies like SpaceX, he will build a legacy that no one has ever imagined, including government officials in the U.S. So what is Musk planning now? And what made him into making weapons? Let's find out. Hello and welcome to Elon Musk Evolution. If you're a Musk fan and don't want to miss anything about this incredible person, then smack the subscribe button and hit the bell icon so that you will be notified whenever a new video is uploaded. And in today's video, we are going to tell you what Elon Musk is making with the United States Air Force. So let's start with what is a hypersonic missile? Hypersonic weapons refer to two distinct categories of missile technology, boost glide weapons and hypersonic cruise missiles. These technologies differ mainly in the way they generate thrust so that they can reach distant targets. These missiles consist of gliding vehicles attached to rocket boosters like those used to launch spacecraft. There are several propellants to these boosters, including fuel and chemical oxidizers. The reaction between these substances releases a lot of energy which speeds up the missile. Once the propellant runs out, usually a few minutes into the flight, the rocket detaches from the glider and falls back to Earth. Many missiles have multiple rocket stages that detach sequentially. The glider continues towards its target in unpowered flight. Gliders use aerodynamic forces to generate lift and maneuver, but they don't carry engines or propellants and can't generate additional thrust. The rocket boosters in boost glide weapons don't last very long, so they can be quite heavy and bulky. With large rockets, boost glide weapons can achieve very high speeds, more than 20 times the speed of sound, making them the fastest hypersonic weapons around. With hypersonic cruise missiles, the engine stays on the whole time. Therefore, the engines of these missiles have to be small and light, limiting their maximum speed. Thus, hypersonic cruise missiles can travel up to 10 times the speed of sound, much slower than boost glide weapons. Now let's jump on why the United States is making a hypersonic missile. After Lockheed Martin Corp's air-launched missiles suffered three consecutive test failures, the U.S. may be unable to catch up with China and Russia in developing hypersonic weapons. It puts in doubt the Pentagon's goal of declaring it the nation's first combat-ready hypersonic weapon and approving its first production by September 30. Both China and Russia have tested their new weapons, which are able to travel five times the speed of sound and maneuver like cruise missiles in flight, making them hard to shoot down. It's expected that the U.S. weapon will cost at least $1.4 billion before it can be deemed early operability ready. The Air Force hasn't released a figure for total acquisition costs. Achieving the fourth and fifth tests of the booster motor by June 30 is the latest hurdle. According to the Air Force Program Office, the timing of these tests will depend on the results of a failure review board for the third test. Whenever those tests are successful, the flight test of a fully functional missile would follow between July and September. A production readiness review has also been completed to assess Lockheed's capability to manufacture and integrate hardware. A hypersonic air-launched rapid response weapon is a fast-track program designed to reduce development and deployment time in order to counter adversaries' rapid progress. It is intended to be dropped from a B-52H and advanced by its booster motor before a solid glide body separates and flies at hypersonic speeds to its target. Last month, Russia tested a hypersonic missile as a warning to the United States and NATO allies. According to Sergei Shoigu, hypersonic weapons will be the key to Russia's non-nuclear deterrence ability in the future. United States report that Russian have on guard hypersonic glider and Sirkon hypersonic missile have been deployed. According to the head of the U.S. Nuclear Command, China is also investing heavily in hypersonic weapons, and one flew 25,000 miles in over 100 minutes in July. With no oversight from lawmakers or the public, China and Russia can proceed with new weapons without pausing testing and deployment under the Pentagon's acquisition system. Under Secretary of Defense for Research and Engineering Heidi Shayu said through a spokesperson she supports the Air Force's aggressive efforts to accelerate development but the September 30th operational capability date is very aggressive. The Air Force is also hedging its bets on the declaration date. Program officials said they are aggressively pursuing an early operational capability while maintaining high standards of technical rigor. Even though tests have failed so far, it is still possible to provide that capability in late calendar year 2022. The flight test program has demonstrated a number of firsts, it said, in particular, the chairman of a House subcommittee that monitors the program is skeptical about the Air Force's ability to meet its goal this year. Rep. Jim Cooper, a Tennessee Democrat, said, The U.S. has a lot of catching up to do with China. It will take much more than a September 30 press release to regain the lead we've squandered since the 1970s. To reach parity, the Pentagon's hypersonic effort needs money, engineering excellence, and rapid testing. 
Still, Cooper worries that the U.S. won't be able to catch up, especially given previous failures with the missile program. On components that shouldn't be challenging technically, Cooper said. The production decision for the first 12 missiles is on hold, pending the results of the December failure review, the two additional booster motor tests, and the full missile flight. Thus, the only hope for them was Musk, and now he has to work together with his team to accomplish this goal. And this progress can be seen with recent leaks. Recently, Musk has made progress by completing the delivery of prototype hardware for its long-range hypersonic weapon, LRHW system, also known as Dark Eagle. The Army Rapid Capabilities and Critical Technologies Office said in a press release on October 7 that deliveries of the hardware will begin in March 2021 and would be completed at the end of September 2021. The delivery did not include missiles, but rather a battery operation center, four transporter erector launchers, and modified trucks and trailers that make up the LRHW ground equipment. The Army plans to field a first battery, which includes missiles, in the fiscal year 2023. In a press release, Lt. Gen. L. Neil Thurgood, director of the Critical Technologies Office, said that today's marks an important milestone in providing our nation with the first hypersonic battery. He added that soldiers are now able to begin training. The training began during the week of October 18, and the Army unit will participate in a series of upcoming flight tests, he said. As part of the LRHW system is the common hypersonic glide body that is shared with the Navy for its sea-launched hypersonic weapons capability called the Conventional Prompt Strike CPS system, scheduled to operate in fiscal year 2025. A joint test of the system was conducted by the two services in March 2020. Reuters reported that Musk also conducted three successful tests of advanced hypersonic technologies, capabilities, and prototype systems in Virginia, as well as another failed hypersonic weapons test in Alaska, as part of a data collection experiment in October. As part of a strategy to compete with similar Chinese and Russian capabilities, Musk has prioritized the rapid deployment of hypersonic weapons. In 2019, Moscow fielded the Avant-Garde, a hypersonic glide vehicle. In its 2019 military parade, Beijing displayed a ballistic missile designed to carry a hypersonic glide vehicle, the DF-17. According to U.S. intelligence sources, China tested a nuclear-capable hypersonic glide vehicle in the summer of 2021 that circled the globe in low orbit. Brig General John M. Olson, acting chief technology and innovation officer of the Air Force, said from a proliferation standpoint, both China and Russia have invested a lot in hypersonic weapons. As a nation, the U.S. has taken a substantive early lead and turned that into a national effort to get caught up and drive forward across the industrial base and the services. So Musk has made drastic changes after making a deal with the U.S. Air Force, and the proof of this we've already seen in the video. It is clear from what has been discussed here that with a great plan, great skills, and a team of great minds, anyone can accomplish what no one has ever imagined was possible. And Musk is that kind of person. And that's it for today's video, folks. If you're interested in watching more videos on Elon Musk, then what are you waiting for? Simply click the subscribe button and ring the bell icon because new videos are on the way.